Sorry there, the driver said and handed me my new boomerang. Didn't see you coming. Cute baby. Before I knew what to say or remembered how to yell, he was back inside his tank, putting it in hyperdrive. You should be careful, he said from out the window, and sped away. Dr. Daniel Byrne, reading a true story by Ryan Knight. An excerpt from uh, Knight's book, Come On, Papa, Dispatches from a Dad in the Dark. The story originally aired on the CBC radio program Wiretap, which is hosted by Jonathan Goldstein and distributed in the United States by PRI, Public Radio International. Coming up, what to do when your neighborhood watch is low rent, wise guys. We have practical, practical tips. That's in a minute. Chicago Public Radio, Public Radio International. KPCC supporters include National University, an accredited educational institution where more than 130,000 alumni have realized their personal and professional aspirations. Over 120 associates, bachelor's and master's degrees, certificates, and teacher credential programs are available at National University, including more than 70 programs online. You can reach your goals at nu.edu. Just a few hours left. Only a few hours left to lock in a 2011 deduction for tax time. Do it now before time runs out. Support KPCC with an online donation at kpcc.org. You're listening to This American Life on 89.3 KPCC. I'm Tammy Trujillo. On today's episode of Radio Lab, we get to know a man who struggles, mostly fails, to contain his Yay, violent outbursts. traffic circles. That's until he meets a bird that can help keep him in check. And two men who are both face blind share workarounds that help them figure out who they're talking to. And find out how building a bus stop helped Alzheimer's patients at a senior center. That's all coming up on Radio Lab today at 3. And the New Year's Eve party comes to you tonight as a Prairie Home Companion welcomes in 2012 with a live three-hour special from Honolulu. It all starts at 10 o'clock tonight right here on 89.3 KPCC. This is American Life, Larry Glass. Hey, Trick and I show, of course, we choose a theme, bring you different kinds of stories on that theme. Today's show, Neighborhood Watch. Stories of people deciding if they're going to look out for their neighbors or not. And now we have arrived at Act 3 of our show, Act 3. Witness for the persecution. A surprising amount of uh, Debbie Logan's workday involves dogs. I'm being asked if you want the dog to be intermittently barking in the interview or not. <laughs> we have a dog in the office. Debbie spoke to me from her office. She's the building manager for a development of apartments and townhouses in Nashua, New Hampshire, called Twin Ponds. 375 units. And in those 375 units, at least 300 dogs, she says. Since they started advertising their dog friendliness a couple years ago, business has been unstoppable. We have no way to breed restrictions. We have one small dog playground on Stay our property. There, We're in the process of building a large one. And that's why a lot of people come to us and why our occupancy uh, rate is so high. It is 99%, so. Wow. Yeah, this people is Ladera Ranch. Familyville, yeah. USA. Oh, I hate that. Pick up after your fucking dogs, people. There was a lot of problems, but it was impossible to find out who they were. They were very sneaky, and they would go out at night or around a corner when nobody's looking. And, um... The, the bigger problem was that it was showing up in grassy areas where kids are meant to play and... No. I know. And around the ponds when people are going over there to enjoy the fishing and... And one of the biggest things was, uh, I'd get a call that said, well, I can't prove it, but I swear it's so-and-so and whatever unit number. Well, I can't do anything with that.